ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I want to take the time to do this video because you guys need to understand what Bradley Christopher Stark had done. The research that he had done, the and it wasn't just Bradley Christopher Stark, he had two other gentlemen helping him, and that is Mr. Michael Rideout and Mr. Demetrius Hawkins. And when these two gentlemen helped him, that's why you'll even see he introduced the Tucker Act in his arbitration, in his request for confirmation. He did this because he had done the research. Now, a lot of you put faith in that, and then you went to the courts, and the courts sat up there and just, just threw your stuff out, just said, no, you can't bring that junk up in here. Get that out of here. And many of you got disheartened because somebody told you no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am glad, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm glad I am not you. I'm glad I'm not you because every time somebody tells me no, I sit up there and say, what the, what do you think you mean telling me no? I like, you ain't got no right to be telling me no. What do you think you're talking to? That's my attitude when somebody tells me no <laughs> because the only time you get to tell me no is if I ask you something that you have a right to say no to. And go and take a look, people. I don't ask you for anything. So none of you have the right to tell me no. But when you call me on the phone and you ask for my help, oh, I definitely have the right to tell you where to go. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have a right to something, nobody can take that right away from you. No one. Not me. Not them. No one. It just doesn't work that way. Sorry, I uh, I have a desk here that someone gave to me. The young lady who donated it to me, she donated this desk, and I don't know how to use it. It is electronic, and it rises and falls, and I don't know how to operate it. But I do see that it wants to operate. And so I just have to figure it out. Really? Okay. Well, I almost figured it out. Let's try that again. Okay. And this one. So I'm going to have to call the person and ask them how do I operate it. Because this desk is one of those. She spent a lot of money on it. It's just she couldn't use it. And so she said she needed to get rid of it because she was moving. That's why she got rid of the cars, because she was moving. She gave them to me, and I appreciate that, because she's a nice woman. Um, let's get back to this, if we shall. Let me tell you what I did, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it took me three months, because I just didn't have the time to go over their paperwork. But when I started going over it, I'm like, whoa, wait a what the? Really? He figured it out. Something that I had been trying to figure out for a long time. What was I trying to figure out? I was trying to figure out how to bind the United States to a contract the same way they bind us to a contract. Thus, the new, pay attention, the new SAP packs. The new SAP packs are under the following principle. Now, I had not shown you this before because I had not put this in the case text before, but I put the United States waives this immunity by engaging in commercial business. So pay attention. Stronger reasons are needed to fill the gap left by Congress. Second, the rule is striking the animal Whatever. Why should an Indian tribe enjoy broader immunity than the states, the federal government, and foreign nations? Why should they enjoy broader immunity than other sovereigns. So pay attention. As a matter of national policy, the United States has waived this immunity from tort liability and from liability arising out of commercial activities. When they engage in commerce, they automatically waive, voluntarily waive. It is not a question. They waive sovereign immunity. Hold on, let's continue. A foreign sovereign may waive sovereign immunity by carrying on commercial activities in the United States. Well, if a foreign sovereign can waive immunity, so does the United States. Let's continue. 
under the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act preserves a foreign sovereign state's immunity from suit unless the foreign sovereign waives such immunity or engages in commercial activity. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to know that I'm doing for you, I'm not doing this for myself. Again, I already know this information. All of your contracts are against the United States, especially pay attention to those of you who have the contracts with the incarceration contracts. The United States, that's what Congress decided in the private law issued to Bradley Christopher Stark known as the Bradley, the relief of the Bradley, <laughs> I forgot, it's called, well, I call it the Bradley Christopher Stark Act, okay? But it is the Bradley Christopher Stark Relief Act, ladies and gentlemen. That Bradley Christopher Stark Relief Act, I want y'all to pay attention. That act is to your benefit because it says that the United States waived immunity. Didn't matter if they responded or not. They engaged in commercial activity. They engaged in commercial activity. They waived immunity. Just that simple. Just that simple. Ain't, 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 don't want to hear. Ah, shut it up. You know what I'm saying? Just that simple. Sorry. Did I optimize these items? Ah, they're optimized. Ah, that's what I was trying to do. So let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of this. This is advanced system care. Oh, I paused this. The waters because they were moving too fast and I couldn't keep up. And I was on a raft and, you know, I was a little creature and it just it just was taking me places I didn't want to go. Yes, I haven't left anywhere. Yes, I'm back. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I've done. A fact. And what I need to put and see, I did it in the other, but I didn't do it in this one. So let's put in Anderson versus United States, a civil action, this is the number, that the United States as sovereign is immune from suits, save as it consents to be sued. The United States in Sherwood, and this is the Supreme Court case, the Federal Tort Claims Act waives sovereign immunity and imposes tort liability upon the United States in the same manner and the same extent as a private individual under like circumstances. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we put it is a fact. And now I take all of these because those were the same way. I need to, why, 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 why? Oh, I'm sorry. I got to do it a different way. So we got to go here and we got to go here. There we go. Uh-oh, we got to go a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Ooh, that was a lot of, that was a lot of little bits. Okay, so we're going to go here. All the way to the bottom, and we're going to copy, copy, then we're going to delete, then we're going to bring that junk back up so we can see what we're doing, because nobody wants to be in a place where they don't know what they're doing, okay, so then we're going to add text, add text, there's these, there are these creatures, this, this bird has got a yellow belly, and it's been coming by, and it's been having a good time, we're going to put A there, now, what we want to do is we want to go down just a little bit because what we're going to do, you know what? As a matter of fact, let's uh, let's go back to edit. We're going to do this because we need to have we need to have the bottom, so we don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. And so what we're going to do is that right there. And there we go. So we have everything where it's supposed to be. Now that we have that where it's supposed to be, we now have to see how far down below the page this goes. You see what happens right there? So now I got to do the same thing over again, which is, which is okay. Because I do that and then I just break it down. Probably going to be about one or two pages. I don't have to go all the way like I did the last time. Uh-oh, maybe I do. Whew. Let's see. And let's go up just right about there. I'm going to suppose that this is everything. 
Yeah, because it doesn't go any further. So we're going to copy. And I'm going to delete. And then now we got to go back up here. Now, all of this is not going to be in the final document because it's too much. We, we only need a few facts. But in our complaint, our complaint will show that these courts, these judges, are violating our rights. Why? Because we have a right to engage in a contract with the United States. That is 100,000, 200 billion percent legal. It is legitimate. I need to add a page. So we're going to insert an empty page. We're going to insert two empty pages, and we're going to do it right after the current page nine. Okay, those pages are in there. Now I need to add the text like I just did. Watch this. And then I just hit paste. Okay, now we're going to bring this. Well, I wasn't trying to do that, but we're going to bring this up again. Okay. Among the nations. Okay, so everything is where it's supposed to be. But again, you're going to see this is going to drop below the page, and I got to do it one more again. This is what this is what I have to go through for y'all. Trying to put this stuff together, and then I got to make this stuff make sense. There's a lot of work involved here, peoples. So I just want y'all to know this ain't, mm -mm, y'all getting this for free. This is what I promised you all. Now, some people may not see the value in what I'm providing right here, but there are some of you who definitely get the value of what I'm providing. Oh, I'm sorry, I do have it correctly. I got to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop this one. Yeah, we'll take this. Even though when I correct it, no, we're going to start here. Because when I correct it, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So let's go up. And then we're going to add our next text here. Okay, so all I have to do is put this there. And then do that. Nope, I got to undo that. Uh-oh, made a mistake. Got to get rid of that. Go back there. I made a mistake. And now we do that. And we do this. Nope, something's wrong. I made a mistake. I got rid of something I shouldn't have got rid of. Okay, let's see, V, okay, no, I did it right, Whew. I thought I copied the same thing twice, and I wasn't trying to, so that was the problem, so we're going to add our text here like we did just a second ago, yeah, see, I thought I missed something, I thought I did the, recopied the whole thing, that's what I get, y'all, because I try to do too much, that's why I did too much. Okay, we're back here. Now I get rid of that. And then we go back up, and there you go. Because we've got to have a bottom to the page. Now, when I edit it, it's going to be shorter. But for right now, that's just the way it's going to be. Then I go here, because this drops there. That's what I'm looking for. You see what I mean? Now i got to take this and highlight this, just like I've been doing. Because I got to now take this page and put it on its own page. This is, I'm creating my own PDF copy. So that you guys will have this application in PDF. Now this application will probably be about 20 pages. But remember, you don't have to do anything to this section. This section is where we're using their own junk against them. That they can... Ladies and gentlemen, they can replay this all day long. They can sit up there and say, I'm this, I'm that. They can call me whatever they want to call me after this. Because I've been trying to tell you all that we have the right to do this. Okay? Pay attention. Under the restrictive theory, foreign states retain immunity for sovereign public acts but not for private commercial acts. Any engagement in commerce is a private act. It is not an official 
Government Act. Does you understand what's going on, people? Does you understand? Because you, if you don't understand what is being said here, you're going to be stuck for a long time. Okay? If you don't understand what's being said here, you're going to be stuck for a long time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, copy, and we're going to put, no, because we're going to stop, we're going to start right there, okay? We're not going to put it up there because this seems to be where this ended, okay? Because you see, this ain't West Virginia, so that seems to be where that ended, and I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to go no further. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Watch this. Don't need that. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this up there because I can. Because that's what I do. Because we're going to combine it. That's what we do. Copy. Move. And. Insertion. Yeah, I wasn't. Okay, so we have that. And then. We're just going to, we're not even going to copy. Oh, that's right. It won't let me do what I want to do. See, I want to bring it down, but it won't let me. So we're just going to get rid of that. And we're going to put 31. Okay, so that will take care of that. And now we are going to do what we should have done. This is the editing I have to do. I'm not going to do it now because that will be boring for the rest of you. Okay, that will be boring for the rest of you. And now, Congress codified the restrictive theory in the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. The restrictive theory is their law. They created it, but it's not their law based on anything other than a law that's already been in place for centuries. And that is whenever a sovereign engages in commerce, comma, that's my comma, Whenever a sovereign engages in commerce, they abandon their sovereign capacity willingly, willingly. They willingly abandon their sovereign capacity. So you don't need their consent. You don't need them to prove they waived it. The fact that they engaged in commerce means that they automatically waive sovereign immunity. Even if it could be argued that it is ambiguous whether the United States has waived sovereign immunity for negligent supervision of independent contractors' claim, the Foreign uh, Tort Claims Act waiver is strictly construed with all ambiguities resolved. And then we'll just do that right there. They've already taken all this into consideration by incorporating that theory into this. So, ladies and gentlemen, this video will not be long. I just have to put this together, okay? The waiver of sovereign immunity by participating in private corporate activities, that any award of financial damages will not have to be paid out of funds provided by taxpayers. Yay! Okay? Because what they did was private. They're responsible for their private acts. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in an open area. There are no trees around me, but I got a ton of birds, and these birds are sitting up here chirping away, and I'm actually enjoying that aspect of my nature, okay? And I think, you know what? I know it's because of, I'm sorry, I have a blue tarp, and it's 50 feet by 10 feet long. And I put the blue tarp out there because I'm going to be, the solar panels will be on the ground and I'm going to put the solar panels on top of the tarp. Now, I just haven't figured out, I don't want to put any holes in the tarp, but I may have to put holes in the tarp in order to mount the solar panels to the ground. Or I might just put the solar panels at the edge of the tarp and leave the tarp there for me to walk on when going to the solar panels. Haven't figured it out yet. But because this tarp is blue, from the sky, it looks like water. And so the birds have been landing on top of the tarp. And I find that very interesting. It shows you that, yes, birds, they're not human. They can't think for themselves, and they are creatures of instinct. 
not creatures of thinking. Okay, like I said, this video won't be very long because I'm not intending for it to be very long. What I wanted to do was tell some of you because many of you were sitting up there doubting your documents. Many of you who have the incarceration contracts were doubting your incarceration contracts. Why? Because you were thinking that it wasn't going to be respected, that they were ignoring it. Ladies and gentlemen, they can ignore all they want. Guess whose job it is to help them not to ignore it? It is yours. That's why we're putting together this complaint form. Because now you get to raise the issue. Now you don't get to create... This is not a new issue. You're not creating an argument. What you're doing is you're using their policies. You see, we've taken their documents. Pay attention. We've taken their documents for filing a complaint of judicial or officer misconduct. Remember, they're all officers of the court. And so if there's misconduct by an officer of the court, then we're going to petition the bar of the court. Okay? So let's do that. Let's do right up here. No, I can't put it up there because that's too high. And here's my dilemma. And I don't want to have to rewrite this. Well, you know what? I don't have to. See this right here? We're going to put this at the bottom right there. Because that that number don't matter to me. Because the other pages don't have numbers on it. Plus, I can always add numbers to the pages. We're going to bring this down here. Do you see? Now, that's the first thing. Then we're going to come up here. Then we're going to bring this down. I, I would rather not have to bring each one down. But I ain't got no choice because of what I'm doing. They're not supposed to even be separated. I did them all in the same paragraph, so I don't know why they're separated. But who cares? We're going to do this as a petition to the bar of the court. The court has its own bar. Now, for those of you who are not aware of that, let me make you aware of it. No, uh-uh. See this right here that I was just about to move? Hold on. Watch this. Hold on. No, I'm going to finish what I'm doing. Y'all hold on. Okay, I will announce when this document is together. Please do not email. When you're looking at a video that is done by Eon, don't email none of the corporations for which I work for for which I am associated with, for which I founded with information concerning my videos. Some of you are starting to really irritate me with that when I tell you not to do it and you do it anyway. Okay, some of you don't know because you don't pay attention to the whole video. So when you get my attitude, when you do stuff like that, I'm going to refer you to this video. Sorry. Whew. Glad I got that off my chest. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please note that I'm aware of all of their rules. However, I, well, I'm not aware of all of their rules, okay, because they're their rules. However, I am aware of the following, that the court has its bar and that these officers are possibly registered under this bar either way as officers of the court, because it doesn't matter if they're registered under the bar or not. So either way, as officers of the court, they are the court's responsibility. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we, we're going to go through and make sure we get rid of all them lowercase c's, okay? If you don't know where I'm from, then you will know lowercase g's. <laughs> well, these are lowercase c's, ladies and gentlemen, and we don't want no more lowercase c's, okay? Because remember, the court is a proper noun. Up to the court. They are the court's responsibility. And as members of the people or of the public claims injury, when a member of the people or of the public claims injury, the matter must be given due attention. And no government agent, quasi-corporation, officer, official, and a representative and or public servant has immunity in such circumstances. You don't get to cause me injury and think that you're immune. Remember, you see how they've been giving police officers immunity? That's because they claim the police department is somehow an officer of the court. Or what they mean is the administrative court. So they're an officer of the court, and so they get immunity. Why? Not because the Constitution says that, but because they created a statute 
So as we talked about, need you guys to pay attention to the video. Need you to pay attention to why we're doing the video. Because some of you are not catching it. Let's do this one right here. That changed in 1952 when the State Department and then the courts adopted the relative theory of the Sovereign Immunity Act. Under the restrictive theory, I said relative, restrictive theory, foreign states retain immunity for sovereign public acts, but not for private commercial acts. Each of these organizations are private organizations. How do we prove they're private organizations? Well, let me show you how we prove they're private organizations. You guys ready to see how to prove that these are all private corporations, private organizations? Well, that's easy. We opened up case text here. I don't need it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in federal withholdings. Uh, sorry, I did federal withholdings too quickly. A-G-E-N-C-Y. Federal Agency Withholdings Yeah, A N D Okay. So Federal with Agencies Withholding and Addresses. You see? Same thing, Federal Agency Withholding and Addresses. Now you see this is a PDF, and that's what I want. See for income withholdings, that's the one I want. That's the one you want. That's what I want. Okay, we've done videos on this, shown this to you guys. I'm going to do this, open a new tab, and it should pop up my download manager, but I don't, oh, that's right, it's not, there's a particular link on the page you have to click on. Although it does say PDF, there's a link on the page you have to click on. Now, this is for the states as well, okay? All of them file comprehensive annual financial reports. Pay attention to the word. Comprehensive annual financial report. Do me a favor. We're going to do two things here because we're going to, two birds, one stone. I'm glad that video is almost done. It's just, it's just taking too long, Google. You, 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 you're just taking too long, Google. All right. What we're going to do is, no, we're not going to go there. We are got to go to, I want to go to YouTube. I know how to do it now. There it is right here. Okay, so we're going to right click. We're going to open. Don't want to do that. Open new tab. It's because of the part of YouTube we're in. That was the YouTube studio. So I didn't want to change it out because I was uploading a video. So I didn't want to mess that up because it would have told me if you move from this page, your video won't get uploaded. We ain't going to care whether or not you get upset about it. That's what it was going to say, and I didn't want to have to you know, deal with Google's attitude. Because, you know, Google got an attitude. They're they kind of stupid like that. They, they do. They, they're kind of stupid like that. And so I have to let them be stupid because stupid is what stupid does. Because stupid, stupid, stupid does a lot of things. Give me one second. I have to unplug something that did not need to be plugged up the way it was plugged up. I have a cell phone that was plugged into one of my um, backup batteries. Well, the backup battery is charging, so the cell phone didn't need to be plugged into the backup battery. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do, and I don't remember his name. Dagnabbit. I, oh, uh, Richardson. Um, I think his name was Christopher. And let's do and I'm gonna do something C A F R Kafers, as some people like to say. So let me see if I can pull this up for you real quick while that other document is finishing. Explain the comprehensive annual financial reports. Nobody asked you for that seven years ago. This ain't this ain't what I'm looking for. I'm, I didn't ask them for that. 
You see how they just give me Google? That's what Google does. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the federal agencies. We did a video yesterday. We were talking about the federal judicial center. Federal judicial center. What I'll do is I'll download it right now. Okay. I'll download it right now and I'll put it up right now under the release dismissal agreement, which is exactly where this contract will eventually be is under release dismissal agreement. And I will put the link underneath the video when I do that video, not this video. Dagnabbit, I thought it was going to give me what I needed. I thought it was going to name it. You see the title right there? I thought it was going to already do the title, but it didn't do that. So let's see if I can get it to slide on over. All right, we're going to do... Now, do you notice this says for income withholdings? Ladies and gentlemen, federal government... Federal, federal, federal government, the federal, the federal government, the federal government is not allowed to own income. Federal government is not allowed to get an income. Federal government is not a business. It's not allowed to make a profit. That's because people don't understand how the government was set up. It's the government by the people, for the people, for other people. If they did any ventures with other nations, trades or anything else, it was supposed to be done as the sovereign. Well, how did the government make money? The government was never supposed to make money. It was never supposed to be trading monies or anything like that. The government, the people were supposed to be making the monies. The people were supposed to be the ones having the corporations. Not the government. And people don't understand that. Government was never supposed to have a so-called EIN number. These are all the EIN numbers just for the court alone. The United States Office of the Court controls all the federal courts. United States federal courts. Now that's new. It didn't have that there before. But the United States federal courts, the Federal Judicial Center, United States judges, and the United States Sentencing Commission. Do you guys understand what's going on here? So you need to understand, it's all a corporation. It's all a corporation. These are all the major federal agencies. They say, well, this no, this is for the employees because the employees, they take out withholdings of the employees. No, ladies and gentlemen, they can take out withholdings for the employees. Nothing wrong with that. I understand they need to take out them withholdings, y'all. But pay attention to this number right here. That's their for an EIN number. And notice it says it says federal, but no, it's a foreign EIN number. It ain't a 98 series number. It's a foreign to the United States of America number because it's a commercial number. This is proof of their engaging in commerce. Okay. These are the EIN numbers. And when you have a number like this, this number shows whom they are associated with. Watch this. See that number right there? That's A9532. Copy, and then I'm going to do my Control F, and then I'm going to do my Control V, and then I'm going to do my Enter. So that number right there, that number, T National Finance Center. I got to find, I got to go down to the National Finance Center. So, yeah, because it's too many of them associated with the National Finance Center. So I got to actually go down to the National Finance Center to let you see what number they're under. More than likely, it's going to be the Department of Agriculture. See, there's the Department of Interior, which will, the Department of Agriculture will probably be under the Department of Interior as well, by the way. So let's get to the National Finance Center. Then we're going to cut this video off because there ain't no need for us to be going on. Y'all can, there's Knights National Finance Center. Oh, they're on their own number. United States Department of Agriculture. That's what I told you. United States Department of Agriculture. That's what I told you. United States Department of Agriculture. That's what I told you. So all of these other agencies that's under such a number, not the National Finance Center, they're under the Department of Agriculture. You have three major departments in here. One of them is the Department of Agriculture. The other one is the Department of the Interior. And the other one is the Department of Defense. Okay. You will see, see Department of Interior. 
and then general service administration. I, I normally you're gonna see the GEO, but if you look up general service administration, it will probably be under the Department of the Interior. So let's go to that's D. 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 There are a lot of departments, so that's why you're gonna see a lot of D's, including. Oh, by the way, those of you, we just saw the Department of Justice. Come on, DOJ. Let me let you guys know something about the Department of Justice. Many people think the Department of Justice with the Attorney General, y'all don't understand how powerful that person is. The Department of Justice has their Office of Inspector General. They have the United States Trustees Program under the Department of Justice. The United States Trustees. Now, here is the thing. This is the DOI, the Department of the Interior. And go ahead and notice who's all under the Department of Interior, the Department of Forestry. But you'll find that a lot of other departments under the Department of Interior. Then you got the Department of Justice, which is going to list the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Then it's going to list the Bureau of Alcohol, Firearm, and Tobacco. And then it's going to list the Federal Bureau of Prisons and Immigration Nationalization Services. Then it's going to list the Border Patrol. But it ain't going to just stop with all of them. It's going to let you know that it's got a ton more departments. See, Bureau of Prisons and National Immigration Services. And then you've got the United States Executive Office of the United States Attorney. Then, you know, you got all these other ones. But again, when you find National Finance Center is, I do believe, under the Department of Agriculture. I do believe the National Finance Center is handled by the Department of Agriculture. Okay. Go ahead and take a look at it. As we told you before, I'm going to tell you now, we're going to put it in the release dismissal section so that you guys will have access to it. Uh, federal agency addresses, release dismissal. And there it is. So it will be there by the time this video is up. And that's where you'll get the document. You don't have to go searching for it on the internet because that's what we do. We give you a one-stop shop so that you don't have to go all over the place. Yes, yes, yes. We know that that's why people like our PDF section. Because they don't have to go searching all over the internet for these items. We had over 40 gigabytes worth of documentation, and the system did not appreciate what we were doing, and so they deleted it. Literally, if you go back to the time period, 2019, they deleted our entire website, everyone. They deleted the entire website. We had backups, but then they deleted the backups. It's a long story. Oh, well, we're just going to keep doing it. Why? Because we must be doing something right. We must be doing something right. How do you I wasn't going to do the Felix the Cat thing. What I was going to do is I was going to take you guys back here. So that I could show you one more thing. We're going to skip down here. Come on now, computer. That was too far down. We got to skip up here. We're going to read. We're just going to stop here. And we're just going to read what it says right here. Like I said, that file is up. So. 1976, United States of America. Therefore, on June 8, 1983, the guarantors had a private contractual right to enforce a recourse agreement in the state of New York pursuant to the 1976 Foreign Sovereignty Immunities Act. Furthermore, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act provides that commercial, commercial activities constitutes commercial activities, commercial activities by any government Commercial activities by any government agency, commercial activities by any government entity is a waiver by the sovereign of its immunity. Therefore, in respective, or excuse me, irrespective of the RPPL 1-54, Powell, by contract, has waived this right to assert sovereign immunity in the state of New York. On May 3rd, the May 3rd Act, of suspension regarding waiver of sovereign immunity with respect to, we're gonna get rid of, uh-oh, I don't wanna do that. Put that back, don't touch that again. Sorry, that was a mistake. We're gonna get rid of this 
And I, this is the stuff that I'm going to take care of because we don't need this part. We just need the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act and how it is in law that any time the government engages in commercial activities, a lot of people were saying it was the Clearfield Doctrine. It is not the Clearfield Doctrine. The Clearfield Doctrine was saying that a corporation that was a quasi-corporation of the United States did not retain the immunity of the United States. So it is not the Clearfield Doctrine. So I do apologize for when I suggested that to people. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. We're going to have to keep it the way it was. Because it doesn't really explain anything. It just says in 1976 of the United States of America, therefore. So let's do this. We're going to. Yeah, we're going to, because that's a quotation, that's the ending of a particular statement. So we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to do that. And we don't even have to have the 1976. We can go straight to therefore. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be correcting a lot of this in this document. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand, those of you who have the, especially my people who are incarcerated who have access to these videos, I need you to pay attention. When we put up the incarceration contract, individuals converted those documents, they sent it out. You had every right to do so because the contract evidences commerce. And as long as it evidences commerce, the United States had an obligation to respond under its trusteeship, being public servants. And when they had an obligation to respond and they did not respond, they consented to the terms of the contract. They don't have immunity. It's called an implied consent contract, and that will be the next set of informations that we'll be placing in here is implied consent. We're not going to use all of these cases. There is no reason for us to use all of these cases. As a matter of fact, all of the language. We're going to use the cases, but we don't need to use all of the language. You follow me? We're going to use the cases, but we don't need to use all of the language. We'll use it as a memorandum section but we won't need to use all of the language. So I'm working on this. Those of you who haven't realized the value of the new SAT packs, whether it be the plus prime or omega, all of those contracts say the same thing. The only thing you do is add your information. It's just the value of the contracts are different. So you don't have to get the omega. Nobody is promoting just the omega. Uh, right now, everybody, that's all they're getting is the Omega. And I, I just want to let people know the Prime and the Plus offer the same protections. Okay. If you already have a SAT pack, do you need to get the current SAT packs? No! We're not trying to get your money. You don't need to get that right now. Are you still going to have to be patient? Oh, most definitely you're going to have to be patient. These are features that we are just now adding, but we're adding them to the new pack. So when we add it to yours, you will be made aware of it, not before. So don't ask about it now. Somebody said, I just watched a video and, and I just want to know if I can have access to that information right now. And the best I can tell you is, no! Okay. When I said no the first time, when I said don't do it and you did it anyway, did you think because you sent two emails to two different locations that that was going to change? I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we're having to deal with. Because people are being insistent. And you can't do that with me because my personality doesn't like insistence. Okay? I keep my word. Everybody who knows me knows that I break my neck to keep my word. I could not. I did the best I could to tell all of you this stuff from the very beginning. You kept asking me, but they did this, but they did that. And I kept telling you, you have to do your research. And this is part of that research that you had to do. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't have an account with Case Text. Come on, Case Text. Come here. We got to talk. Uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. Get back up there, Case. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a con contract with Take Case Tech. That's why I just have a subscription. I have 14 days left in my trial. So I'm going to tell you, give Case Tech its, its, its credit and go to Case Tech. Okay? And do your research. Watch this. See, we just did that. They don't have immunity when they engage in commercial business. That's all we needed to put. Now we go I M P L I E D C O N S E N T I G R E E M E N T. B Y T O N D U C T. Uh, parties. I decided to be a little bit more detailed that time. Implied consent agreements by the conduct of parties. See, each one of the agreements, the contracts we have online are implied consent agreements. So consent may be implied by a party's conduct. Again, I didn't say that. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure you implied consent per contra arises from the party's course of conduct. If they have a duty to respond and they fail to respond, and that's one of the conditions of the contract, Mr. Bradley Christopher Stark understood this, then they don't have an out. Parties may implicitly consent through their conduct. Don't let the courts tell you that, no, they didn't agree. Excuse me, uh -uh, we have a right to an evidentiary hearing. By the way, this is done with the American Arbitration Association. Pay attention. This is this person versus the American Arbitration Association. Under common law contract doctrine, under common law contract doctrine, under common law contract doctrine, a third party may consent to the terms of a contract expressly through words or tacitly by conduct. Hello! So, ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what we're doing? We're just following the law, and we're giving you that law so that you can follow it. So, what I want to do for you, and I'm going to do you this favor, we're going to call this page the Implied Consent Case Law. And we're going to just copy it and we're going to put it in a Word document. And we're going to make that Word document available for you. Okay? We're going to make that Word document, hold on, available for you. Copy, Word, the laws you did not know. That's it. Let's see, we all started with the challenge jurisdiction. That's how all of this got started today. And then I got to go because I do have some paperwork I have to catch up with. So I am T L I E D C O N S E N T. Don't know how I got a C where a D. Oh, C is right under D. Oh, come on, contractual. Ah, all right. conduct that's the title of this document ladies and gentlemen that's the title that's the sound of the men they're working on the chain gay that's the sound of the men they're working on the chain gang don't you hear me calling i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen now you have the implied consent document the only thing i need to do is this right here save and when I save it, it's going to be saving to my documents. But I don't want to save it to my documents. I want to choose a different location. Because that saves it to the cloud. I don't want to save it to no cloud. Okay? Let's say more options. It's going to give me more options. It's going to tell me, hey, you know where I want you to save it to? And I'm going to be like, no, I don't know where you want me to save it to. Why don't I save it where I want to save it? And it's going to be like, because it don't work like that. And I'll be like, because it does work like that. Oh, really? So you think you're in control here? And I'll be like, you know what? It ain't, it ain't a matter of thinking. It, it, I don't have to think about it. That's what Rock Ham said to do. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Don't waste your time. Think about it. Okay. So I don't have to think about it. Everybody else got to think about it because that's why they're there. They're there to think about it. You know, we're going to put this, I'm going to save it here for now in the clerk style manual. 
okay? That's where I'm going to put it, but it, on the website, it's going to be under the release dismissal agreement. So watch this so that all of you know, release dismissal agreement is where this case law will be because sometimes people don't listen. And sometimes I have to explain it to them. So we have the implied consent contractual agreement. Watch this. And we're going to put it in the release and dismissal. Okay, release, dismissal, and complaint. See, we already were getting ready to do the complaint form in there. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, this was the plan to give you that information. My people who are incarcerated, my people who are sitting up there knowing that their due process rights were violated and who did the incarceration contracts, I need you to stand your ground. I need you to keep fighting. I don't need you giving up. This wasn't to bring you a little bit of hope. This was to let you know that you do have rights. And if you read the case law that's going to be in the complaint form, you will see that it doesn't matter if you were found guilty. If they violated your rights, the law says that you can challenge that judgment as a void judgment at any time, and you don't have to do it on appeal. Okay, the case law is going to be there. And if you have access, to case text. See, how did I get access to case text? Well, I can't tell you guys because once I do that, then people won't have access the way I got it. You have to go back and remember the videos where I talked about how I got access to case text because that's how I got access. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Do you know what I'm do you know what I'm saying, Vern? Okay. So, because see, if I told you guys how I got access, it will cause a problem. I mean, you know, because I could show you um things that could cause some issues but from time to time it's just necessary for you to understand how to get things done yourself okay uh oh how did that get there that ain't supposed to i didn't move that down get back up here get back up here get right not there over here oh, god just won't listen not you i'm talking about case where'd it go uh oh it, it left. Oh, because it's not on this page. Ooh. Okay. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I got to get back to where I was. Look at that. It did it again. Would you stay where you belong and quit jumping off the page? Sorry. What happens is my key sticks because uh, I keep hitting it because I'm muscular dystrophy. I don't know my own strength. And so I am very, what I have always been called all my life, heavy handed. And so my little pinky and my little index finger there's a lot of there was this uh the son of solomon his name was rehoboam and he went to his advisors to talk about how to handle some of the servants of solomon and he told him to give me a couple of days and come back and then i'll give you my decision and so his stupid advisors his friends told him hey you shouldn't give them an easier life you should make life harder on them. They ain't done nothing to have their life being harder, but he decided to do something stupid. He said, so I will exercise more authority with my little index finger than my father exercised with the thigh of his leg. So my index finger is a little heavy, like red bone. But red bone had to pay for his index. <laughs> oh, God, did he have to pay for that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, for those of you who are incarcerated, for those of you who are using those contracts, you need to understand you have certain rights. Those contracts talks about those rights. Those contracts talks about people violating those rights. We were going here to find Mr. Christensen because he specifically talked about, not the controller, and we don't need... Um, This video is years ago, okay? In his video, he talked about the capers. And I'm sorry that I don't know, remember his full name. Uh, I do know his name was Richardson, okay? And I do know that he did... Um, a video on corporations but it was a long video because he explained everything and when he did that video on corporations 
He explained how each corporation files a comprehensive annual financial report. Well, government agencies files a comprehensive annual financial report. How to read your government's comprehensive annual financial report. When they file these comprehensive annual financial reports, he, Mr. Richardson, explained, Clint Richardson. No, is it that Clint Richardson? Uh, and Moses Malone visit the White House. I believe it is this Clint Richardson. I believe his name is Clint Richardson, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? That's why I said Chris. So I believe his name is Clint Richardson. And I'm trying to see the video. Even this right here. Corporation Nation Radio Archives. K for School Day 2. Okay? So... Corporation Nation. This is it right here. Clint Richardson. See? Seven years ago. Clint Richardson. Okay? This is it right here. Right here. Okay, but I do know that I saw the video originally in 2012. If you go and read Clint Richardson, he explains how the government files comprehensive annual financial reports and to prove what amount of taxes they pay, you have to look at the notes, term definitions, uh, references and ledgers. He explains that in the video. Okay, this person puts it up seven years ago, but he did this video, and this is 2021. So, 2014, yeah, kind of technically is not seven years ago, but technically it is. But he did this video, I believe, in 2012. But yeah, this is the video, Corporation Nation. Okay, so you see how I, when I tell you guys, if I say something, I'm definitely going to try to do my best I can to give you guys proof of that. Look at this, Corporation Nation, day one, day three, day two, day, Corporation Nation, I don't know. Oh, with host Clint Richardson, begins CAFR school. Hey, I don't know anything about that school, but I'm going to let y'all know that he must be giving you guys some... Hey, I remember Tammy Peppermint. Interesting, ain't she? Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, Clint Richardson. I did not know that Clint was still giving information, but these videos are seven years ago. Okay, so I don't know what Clint's doing now, but the fact that the first one we saw, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make this video long. But the first one we saw with his name on it was Clint Richardson and Moses Malone visits the White House. Oh, this is uh, Budweiser's Clint Richardson. Tells a legendary story about the time Moses Malone, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if this is the same Clint Richardson. Okay, but I do know that... From the video that Clint Richardson did, the one that I just showed you, Corporation Nation, watch this. Sorry, Clint, for thinking your name was Chris, because again, I haven't talked about your video in years probably since 2019 and so remembering something that i watched way back in 2012 i guess it is the same uh i guess it is the same but i'm not sure uh ladies and gentlemen the corporation nation i think this probably is clint's website okay so i'm gonna send you to the corporation nation um, because I do believe that this is he. Okay? And if you want to know more about how this government is ran, how the finances are, remember, anytime they pay taxes, the sovereign pays no taxes. Oh, look at that. Common Core, Agenda 21, Clint Richardson. But nothing recent. So, I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for taking the time. And I am very grateful to have brought this information to your attention. Okay. I am very grateful for bringing this information to your attention.
I'm going to tell you all to have a good day, have a good night. And I'm only advocating his uh, <laughs> uh, videos on the capers. Y'all, goodbye.